Hello everyone, welcome back to Beast of the North. Today I've got a homemade dog food recipe for you. I have been spending a lot of time on YouTube watching homemade dog food recipes and just general dog food making videos and I've noticed that a lot of them really don't feel species appropriate. I noticed that there's a lot of grain, there's way too many vegetables, and I think that I can offer everyone something a little healthier. Um, every ingredient I have here has a purpose in terms of nutrition and the vegetables are properly processed so that a dog can derive nutrition from them. And the meat you will see, I'm personally going to be leaving raw. However, if you like to cook your dog's food, you can absolutely cook the meat. So what you'll notice is um, some of the ingredients already come cooked from the store and some I've done myself. So I will explain each ingredient as I go along making this uh, recipe so that you can have an idea of whether you can cook it, if it already comes cooked, if it can be fed raw, and what each ingredient adds to the recipe to make it very nutritious and healthy for dogs. One thing you will notice is that I don't feed any grain in my recipes. Um, very rarely I will do a recipe with something like quinoa, um, but for the most part I use green vegetables and um, low glycemic level vegetables for my dog food. So let's get started. The first thing to note here is that the exact amount of each ingredient isn't something that you need to get 100% correct. It's okay if you have a little more heart and gizzard or a little more sardine or a little more organ meat. Um, what you want to aim for in general is no less than 70% animal protein in the food. So you can go all the way down to 50% animal protein, but I do believe you're going to be missing out on a lot of amino acids and the amounts of protein and fat that dogs should be consuming. So my number to aim around is usually 70 to 80% animal protein, and the rest would be your vegetable, fruit, and whatever supplements you want to add. So this recipe is about five pounds of food. So if I'm doing 80% animal protein and 20% vegetable, I'm going to have four pounds of animal protein and one pound of my vegetable, fruit, and supplements. So let's get started. Um, a quick note before I start mixing everything together is in terms of um, storing this recipe once it's done, you can absolutely leave it in the fridge for probably around four-ish days. The rest you can freeze. So it's safe to freeze. It'll last for probably, I wouldn't leave it in there for more than two, three months um, because fresh food is obviously superior because you don't get as much degradation of nutrition in your meal. So what I like to do is I set aside some food for probably one or two days and then the rest gets frozen into like meal size portions. So I can just take one at a time, thaw it and put it right in the bowl. All right, so let's get started here. What I've got first and probably the biggest bowl, which, you know, is very clearly this one here. This is chicken hearts and gizzards. So it's got a lot of heart in it. Um, a bit more than the gizzards, but that is okay because heart is a very, very nutritious muscle meat. Um, it is, you know, we think of it as an organ in the body, but when it comes to feeding dogs raw, it um, counts as a muscle meat. So for you, you can decide either to leave this raw, which is what I'm going to do because my dogs eat raw, um, or you can cook it. What I like to do for cooking is either chop it up a bit more, or you can leave it whole, boil it, or um, steam it, or even bake it in the oven. I don't really like to fry my dog food. Um, the only sort of exception is the egg, but I do that in a bit of a special way, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, yeah, so for the chicken hearts and gizzards, that's going to be 
your source of protein, fat, iron, zinc, B vitamins, copper, and phosphorus. So that's sort of the biggest portion of the food. And moving on to our next ingredient, I've got some sardines. So these sardines are wild caught sardines in water, uh, low sodium. And I've put three, three tins of these into a bowl here. So all I'm gonna do is add that in. So the sardines are important because they are your main source of omega fatty acids. So your omega-6, your omega-3s, it's really important to have that in every single meal every day. If you don't um, have some kind of fish to supplement that, then you'll want to supplement with um, some fish oil. So you can use salmon, you can use herring, you can use sardine oil, you can use krill oil. Um, there's a lot of options. To get the appropriate type of omega fatty acids, you'll want to use uh, marine sources because the plant sources, although they do have um, threes and sixes, they have a lot of omega-9 and they're not uh, properly balanced for dogs. So you do need marine sources, which can be a bit tough to deal with just in terms of allergies or uh, sourcing because we all know that um, our fish oils tend to deplete our oceans and that's not a great thing. But um, the sardines work great. Sardines are very high in protein. They've got your omega fatty acids. They've got vitamin D, which is extremely important. They've got calcium, vitamin B12, and they have vitamin E. So the important thing with sardines is that uh, the vitamin D and the vitamin E are hard to get in just like a prey, not a, not a prey model, sorry, um, like a, a barf diet, like a raw meaty bones diet, the 80-10-10 the or the 50-45-5% ratios of just raw meat. Um, so it's good to get fish in the diet so you can get those two vitamins because they are very important and they will it will cause deficiencies if you do not have those. So that's why I like to use sardines. <laughs> All right. Next, sorry, this is a lot of information, so hopefully you'll be able to pause and take some notes or go back and rewatch sections. Um, I do like to provide, as I said, information on each ingredient as I'm preparing food so that you guys know what's going into it and why I've added something. All right, so moving on, we have got our organ meat. So this is chopped up beef liver and beef kidney. So I've got the two organs there. The beef liver is a source of protein, but, uh, B, B vitamins, vitamin C, iron, phosphorus, copper, potassium, and, you know, amino acids, which is essentially raw meat is full of amino acids. You want lots of protein. Um, the kidney has vitamin A, C, B12, B2, potassium, copper, iron, B5, B1, B6, and selenium. So it gives you a lot of the vitamins and minerals that don't come in just muscle meat. So organ meat is extremely important. You wanna make sure you have enough of it. Give it a little mix here. You can think of organs like the superfood in raw feeding. They're full of nutrition, they're very necessary. They're like multivitamins. That's what it looks like so far. I'm gonna make sure it's thoroughly mixed once I've got everything in here. Just gonna grab myself a paper towel. All right, so next, I've got eggs. So this is the whole egg, obviously no shell, um, scrambled lightly, very lightly cooked on low to medium heat. Um, what I've done with it is I put it in a pan and I've added just a little bit of water, and then once the water was starting to boil a little bit, I dumped this in and started cooking it. So you want to cook it lightly. And I, I think this is, yeah, this is three eggs. So three large eggs. I could have done four, but um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to add a little bit more sardine and I ended up doing that. So 
You can do four eggs, but I think three is a good amount if you're doing um, a recipe like this with the five pounds of food. There. All right, so for the eggs, you've got more protein, you got your healthy fats, you got vitamin A, more vitamin D and vitamin E, you got choline, you got iron, folate, and vitamin B12. So this recipe in general, you will not find any deficiencies in vitamin B12 because there's a lot in there and it's a very important vitamin. You don't want dogs to be deficient in that. And there's a lot of it here. All right. So next up, we've got cooked blue mussels. These I buy already cooked in a bag and they come frozen so you can just take out as much as you like. I've got about a cup here. Um, mussels, you can actually, like, so if you think about how much food you've made for your dog, ideally you want about, depending on the size for, let's say a 50 pound dog, two to three mussels a day will cover um, what they're lacking in just the raw meat diet. So for mussels, you've got uh, vitamins A, C, B12, B2, B3, B1, folate, iron, phosphorus, manganese, which is extremely important, selenium, zinc, and some more omega fatty acids. So the important thing about the mussels is the manganese. It's really hard to get manganese in just regular raw meat. You actually don't really get much. So if you're not feeding fur and feathers, which is where a dog or any wild canine would get their manganese in the wild, you need to supplement with something like seafood. So you've got mussels, or you can use oysters. It's interchangeable in this recipe. You can use mussels or oysters. Um, the oysters come in cans, if I recall, and they will be your source of manganese along with boosting the rest of your vitamins. So I've added about a little over a cup in here. I may actually add a bit more now that I'm looking at it. Let me see here. I can show you the bag that I purchased. This is what I bought at the store. So it's just blue mussels that are already frozen. I'm just gonna add a couple more here. As I'm mixing this in, the one thing I will make a note of is that I don't always feed um, like recipes that are balanced to NRC standards or AFCO. Um, you can absolutely do that. I have been feeding raw for a very long time and you guys probably know that I am a certified animal care technician and I took a course in animal nutrition and I have been doing dog nutrition for over a decade now. So for me, it feels really easy to balance stuff, um, not to, you know, the exact listed standards, but balance it enough that my dogs are getting nutritionally balanced food. So if you don't have the experience and skill that I have when it comes to making dog food, you can absolutely buy um, something like like a Pet Diet Designer, I believe it's called. It's a program where you would like implement your dog's information, implement their uh, diet, so their, their food, whatever meal you've prepared, their recipe, and it'll tell you what's lacking and what's you know getting too much of what. So that's a great way to balance your dog's food if you wanna be uh, super careful about the nutrition they're getting. And that's totally valid and a wonderful way to feed a dog. Um, but I find it less stressful and my dogs are still thriving on just um, sort of my, my general knowledge of how to put a meal together. Um, you should typically aim for the equation that I supplied you with in the beginning of the video if you're doing sort of a homemade food. Um, if you're doing a raw food, I really like the 80-10-10. So 80% um, muscle meat, 
10% edible bone, 10% organ meat, but you'll need to supplement because 80-10-10 is not balanced. So you'll need to add things like vitamin E and uh, omega fats and all that good stuff. So enough with that. I know I went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but let's continue with our recipe. So the next thing, I've got zucchini. So this has been chopped and steamed. Um, I chopped it into bite-sized pieces. And the reason I steamed it is because dogs have a hard time digesting vegetable matter. So in order to help them derive nutrition from the vegetable, we pre-digest it for them. So you're either going to steam it or boil it to cook it a bit, or you're going to finely mince it or chop it so that you're breaking down the cell walls and making it easier for the body to pull nutrition from the plant matter. So this is my cooked and chopped zucchini. And then I've got my pumpkin. Oh, before I move on, the zucchini is uh, important because it is a source of fiber. So any vegetable matter and fruit that I add into the diet and this thing here, which I'll explain in a minute, is a good source of fiber and important in the diet. Um, fiber has a lot of benefits. I know that um, people talk about fiber for stool consistency, so having a good digestive system, but fiber also feeds the gut microbiome. And if you don't know about the gut microbiome, comment below if you want me to do a video on it because it's extremely important when it comes to the health of our dogs and how long they end up living and even temperament issues. So I can do a video on probiotics if you'd like to learn more about it. Um, so the fiber has many purposes in a diet, but I really like it for feeding the gut microbiome um, and helping with digestion. So on top of that, zucchini has vitamin A, vitamin C, more manganese, potassium, magnesium, and small amounts of B vitamins and minerals. So on, in terms of the amounts you can use, I added a cup and a quarter, I believe, of zucchini. And for the pumpkin, I'm going to add half of a can. This is a pretty big can. And this is pure pumpkin, not pie filling. You don't want pie filling. It's full of sugar and useless ingredients. I'm going to add half a can of the pumpkin. Pumpkin's going to be more fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, some vitamin E, B vitamins, choline, vitamin K, potassium, copper, and more manganese. So you can get some manganese from vegetables, but you get a really good dose from the mussels, as I mentioned earlier. So go ahead and start to mix this. And if you notice that your dog needs a bit more fiber than normal, you can absolutely add some more vegetable. Like I said earlier, you want to try and aim for 70 to 80 percent animal protein in a meal. But if your dog has special needs, then you can absolutely make adjustments to accommodate that. There's no shame in that. Nothing wrong with that very important to feed the dog in front of you. All right, so let's see what we got next. Got a towel. All right, so this is two and a half tablespoons of ground chia seed. Chia seed has a lot of amazing nutrition in it. It's got some essential fatty acids, it's got some vitamin E, a lot of fiber, some protein. For some reason I'm drawing a blank on exactly what it has, so I'll either pop that in the video description or you can just um, use Google and check out the nutritional data on chia seeds. But I like to always add a little bit. There we go. And now this 
is wild picked Canadian blueberries. So they're a little small, as you can see in the bowl, but that is because they're wild picked. So they don't, um, they don't grow to be too huge before they're, they're picked. And again, you got lots of vitamins and minerals and more importantly, antioxidants in these blueberries, which is why they're a great addition to, to your dog food. All right, so our last ingredient, sea kelp. You guys probably know about it if you are at all interested in dog nutrition and supplements. So I've got some dehydrated sea kelp. And since I've got four pounds, of, no, five pounds of food, I'm gonna add four teaspoons of kelp. So the kelp is really important because it provides iodine in the diet, but um, it also has a ton of amino acids, has a ton of vitamins, has a ton of trace minerals. So in general, it's absolutely fantastic to add to your dog food. It should be in every homemade diet. Make sure that the kelp you buy does have iodine. For some reason, some of them don't. Some of them have been stripped, which is very strange, but that is a thing, so do check when you buy a supplement. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now you're probably wondering, where's the calcium? There's no calcium. Calcium is extremely important. Every meal needs to have calcium. So you've got two options here. You can give a supplement, which is calcium carbonate, which is what I have here. Um, you want to give about, I think it's 800 to 900 milligrams per pound of food. And um, I think there are other types of calcium you can use. I will double check and leave that in the, um, the video description just to be clear on what supplements you can actually get for this, but you'll want to add calcium to this bowl. If you do not want to use a supplement and you are feeding raw, you can add, um, like once you scooped some of this into the, your dog's bowl, you can actually add whatever raw meaty bone you like. So what I'm going to do, because I got a ton of them on sale last week, is I'm going to be feeding this with um, chicken drumsticks. So you can do chicken quarters, you can do turkey necks, you can do whatever kind of raw meaty bone your dog likes or you have on hand, and you can feed that with this. So what I would do is 75% of this, and then the rest is your raw meaty bone, depending on how meaty the bones are. My drumsticks are a bit bone heavy, so I'm going to do 75% of this, and the rest of the food will be the drumsticks. And if you are cooking everything and you don't want to feed raw bone, then get a calcium supplement and go ahead and add that in. So what I would do is put it into a plastic baggie and crush it up, turn it into a powder. You can also put it in a, one of those small um, like bullet blenders and get it all powdered, add it to the food and mix it really well. And that will be good just the way it is for a meal. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you like this recipe. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down in the comments below. If you like this video and wanna see more recipes for homemade dog food, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and that will let me know that you're interested in more. If you have any questions about the recipe or if you have any questions about homemade dog food in general, whether that's cooked or raw, you can leave those in the comments below as well. I'll do my best to answer you as quickly as I can. And yeah, so, this is it. Healthy, fresh, raw, or cooked, species-appropriate food for your dog that they will absolutely thrive on. This is the kind of food you want them eating for longevity, 
for good health, for disease resistance. This is it. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Bye.